Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, in this video, I'm going to share with you uh, my struggles with ADHD, that is Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, uh, or ADD, they call it Attention Deficit Disorder, and uh, how I have managed to channelize my energy, control it, and uh, manage to achieve success in my work. Otherwise, anyone with ADHD would know that you get very distracted. Okay, and uh, before I do get into this video medical disclaimer that this is not a medical video this is not medical advice i'm sharing with you what has worked for me and i'm giving you my personal struggles with adhd okay uh, my recommendation for you is if you suspect you have adhd or you think you have or you're worried whatever the case don't go to just one doctor go to multiple doctors and people who you trust people with credibility uh, until you get the diagnosis which you believe is the right one. And the second thing which I'd like to tell you is uh, I I personally will be giving you stuff that has worked and not worked for me. So be cautious when you're listening to it and don't necessarily, you have to follow it. So I don't want you to follow or not follow and then say, oh, you know, I tried it, Law, you destroyed my life. So because these are very sensitive subjects okay so let's start before i do begin um yeah just an introduction my name is Lloyd macedo um i'm a personal branding strategist i help people get jobs in the middle east especially uae and dubai and people contact me for my advice for consultation that is personal professional problems now i have noticed many people comment in some of my videos like how I heard your ADHD or how did you deal with your ADHD? Now, I, I, here's a funny thing. Until the age of 30, I didn't know I had ADHD. That was only after I went to a psychologist, psychiatrist, did I know that. And the only reason I went to a psychiatrist, the psychiatrist was there, was because he turned out to be my client for public speaking. Okay. And lo and behold, when he said he wanted to approach me as a student of mine to learn public speaking, I asked him, what does he do and all that? And he told me he's a psychiatrist. I was like, oh, wow, I always wanted to visit. And the reason why I wanted to visit is because my, my parents, relatives, people who knew me, because I used to talk too much, because I had a lot of energy, because I was, you know, um, attention-seeking every time, they told me I was mentally you know, cuckoo. They said that um, I should approach a psychiatrist. I had mental problems. That's what they all claimed. Okay. So I know some of you would love to say this. Yeah, looking at your face, you look like you have mental problems. So we'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to about this. So at the age of 31, I finally managed to get a psychologist, uh, sorry, psychiatrist. And um, it's, you, you know, it's, it's not like you just meet them and they it's like, you know, when you have fever, cough, cold, or you go to a, a GP, he'll just say, oh, okay, this is your fever, take these tablets. No. When you go to a psychiatrist, he has to, or psychologist for that matter, he has to sit with you for multiple sessions. Okay. And I think I literally went to him for, I think, two years, two years plus, almost three years. And... Um, after an initial, I think, couple of months, he finally told me, Law, I think you have ADHD. So when he told me that, I didn't know what was ADHD. I really didn't know. You know, you're talking of days, my, my days, where there was no internet, there was no Google. You know, it was all new. And uh, even if Google was there, I mean, not many of us knew how much to use or what to use. And uh, smartphones were... A relatively kind of a new thing but the time period of 
age of 30. We had phones, we had Google, but it was still not something that we used every single time, or at least I didn't. So the minute he told me ADHD, I obviously went online to check what is this ADHD, and then I found a few medical journals. And I'll tell you, the first time when he told me that I had ADHD, I really thought I had some cancer or tumor or I was going to die. This was my first reaction. I really thought I was going to die. Uh, I had some brain kind of tumor and it was growing and I thought I had few days to live. I guess the doctor, <laughs> uh, either I didn't express my insecurities to him or my fears or he didn't communicate to me properly that, no, it's not uh, kind of a disease or tumor or cancer. I was very upset. And later on, he suggested control tablets. Now, um, control tablets are not something you can get off the counter. No, it has to be prescribed to you. And I do know that there are people who do take these nootropics and all that. Please don't experiment with all this because a lot, a lot of these manufacturers will put one thing in the bottle, they'll claim what they put in the bottle and what they put in the bottle may not even be actual what they advertise. It can be just plain rubbish. In some other cases, they even put caffeine. And, uh, you know, you have seen, I've seen a lot of these documentaries. So be very careful. Do not, please do not buy anything from any fancy website or Amazon, all that. It'll be expensive, but if you're buying proper medicine, always go through a hospital or a doctor who can get you the original stuff. Okay. So he prescribed the control tablets and uh, I didn't know what this was going to do. But I'll tell you, the first time I took the control tablets, man, it was, to give you an idea, like, however I am today, I was 10 times more hyper than I was today. Okay, just let that visualize. I get up in the morning, I'm hyper, I uh, want to do something or another, go to the gym, then again I'm hyper. The boundless energy would never end. Okay, I would even talk fast. I had to do something or another, either go for exercise or be with a girl or, you know, be on stage or do something to get me noticed. And I wanted to be everywhere. Okay, it was a disaster. But in a way, it was a good thing because I kept myself busy. But the minute I took these pills, these control tablets, the first day, maybe it was the first time, the first reaction. I'll tell you, this is how I became. I took the tablets, sitting on my chair, you know, I'm the manager of this company. Sitting on the chair like this. Seriously, eh? just, just. Like, it's not that I do not know that I'm sitting still, but I don't feel like moving. Or just like this. And I was comfortable being like this, like when you're meditating, no? For example, when you're meditating, you don't feel time pass by. And before you know it, one hour is passed. So when I was sitting like this, my eyes are open. I was not even like feeling like moving and, you know, restless. And normally I would be like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Then check with the, play with the mouse, open a window, play a game, check something, check my phone. Oh, I'm feeling hungry. Let me get up. Oh, I want to go to the toilet. Oh, I want to see someone. Hey, who's this? So that was how I normally was. But after taking this control pills, I became the extreme opposite. I was like, and you'll not believe uh, very soon the my colleagues who were sitting near me, they asked like, sir, are you feeling okay? Like, are you okay or like what? So I was like, yeah, yeah I'm just taking these tablets to control my this thing. So, and I was even speaking slowly. Everything became like slow motion for me in terms of behavior. I did this for a couple of days, but one day, and mind you, those days I was a public speaker. I used to speak in public, love to get attention. When somebody asked me to prepare a list of topics or do something creatively, normally my head was oozing and exploding with creativity. But after taking these tablets, when a person asked me, can you give me some creative ideas for a topic for speaking? I wasn't able to think. I'm serious. I uh, Like... Like, for example, if 
if i could get 10 topic like you ask me a question like can you think of good topics to think about i'll give you uh why didn't you do this 2 3 4 5 6 7 and i'll just go on until i get 10 but now when i got the topic the question can you give me 10 topics i was like um seriously that's how i was and then um towards i think after nearly half an hour or some time i was like and what the hell is this here is is this how i want to be for the rest of my life like a vegetable like before i'm hyper i'm smart i'm interactive i'm creative people are asking me i'm interacting with them even if i give the wrong answer i'm giving some answer but here just to fit into society to fit into a crowd to fit in to be considered normal do i want to destroy my brain cells and become this vegetable nice vegetable likable vegetable not talking not disturbing anyone so everyone's happy good 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 shut your mouth we are very happy but i'm not happy and i was like man i can't live my life like this i i really couldn't imagine that and uh, the following day i went and met the doctor and i told him see listen this is the impact it's giving me with these control tablets and i'm not very happy with the way things are going i don't want to be like this he says then would you be okay going back to how you were i say i told him i think i'm more happier there than this then he said then you should stop taking he saying no i recommend you stop taking and that was the end of it now i'm not telling you that if you take the tablets this will be the effect neither am i saying that it'll be as bad or it'll be good every human being is different but i chose and i decided made up my mind that day just to be normal for society or to be a nice guy or to be well behaved or controlled i'm not going to make myself a vegetable okay so now it comes to the part like how did i channelize or control my adhd okay see when you're young no you have boundless amount of energy very less attention spam and given the fact that today we have social media and we have this immediate gratification of wow i got an email wow i don't know what i'm going to let me scroll i'll get something wow i'll get a prize if i log into the game so these apps are designed to make you addicted and worsen the adhd but that does not mean you have adhd remember this much that until adhd was invented it was only after it was invented everyone kind of oh i have adhd until then nobody knew adhd existed that condition was not there so sometimes what happens is i feel people are just boxing others into adhd like for example my daughter she is hyper super sonic hyper even more hyper than i ever was and the first thing my wife told me first thing huh imagine my wife was a rice farmer oh we have to give her tablets she has this and she kind of told me and then she showed me it was adhd i said so what do you want to do she's saying yeah i'll trouble people i'll irritate people she'll not be you know liked by other let's give her tablets and control her. many people in my family just imagine a, a woman who works in the rice fields was not even sophisticated knows what is adhd and just because she read it online or some youtube or something or people just discuss she decided the solution is to give a child my baby tablets to numb her enthusiasm numb her creativity i said nothing doing absolutely nothing doing she is not abnormal she is perfectly normal this is exactly the way a child should be boundless energy boundless creativity boundless happiness it will be irritating for some people it might even be irritating for us but making her vegetable no way i see this as creativity i do not see this as a disruptive behavior and if she wants to dance i'm going to put the music and let her dance if she wants to run around jump around we will provide her the platform to do that but i'm not going to tie her hands and legs and tell her sit in one place because other children are like that or society wants you to behave like that no sorry i will not and lo and behold i think my my daughter is perfect she is hyper she is with boundless energy 
is very irritating sometimes but she has a list of strengths which many other kids do not have i'm perfectly okay with them coming to this tattoos many people say when they say oh you need to visit a psychiatrist here i have already done the reason i got all these tattoos was after after i met up with the psychiatrist and the reason is simple i always wanted attention i always wanted to stand out i always wanted to be different and lo and behold this was my way of being different many people do it differently some have expensive cars some have big bodies some have uh, they like to show off their credentials or academic excellence or their careers i chose i guess all these gimmicky tattoos and muscles and public speaking and girls but eventually as you as i got old i realized okay i have attention in those areas but i am not getting any returns returns which matter and that was especially money so now the question comes how did i manage to channelize and control it number one is exercise very important the more exercise you do intense not the duration it will calm you down okay but it will also give you testosterone and adrenaline and make you focused that is exercise number 2 is if you already hyper and you start taking stimulants like coffee red bull especially anything with sugar anything with sugar man you are inviting trouble it's like putting fuel into fire and the problem with these is it goes up like you know big fire and then it goes down again again you want to put some more um uh, caffeine and all that so it's a very bad combination but even worse is alcohol because that will make your problem 100 times worse more dangerous and you will be addicted and one of the cautionary tale i have to give you is anybody who's hyper or who has adhd and if you smoke drink smoke or drink or drugs you'll be addicted to this addicted for the rest of your life it'll ruin your life forever so please 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 that is why lucky for me i don't smoke i don't drink i don't do drugs um i was able to channelize my madness by public speaking by being on stage by training so people used to forcefully look at me and uh, i knew that if i wanted to keep their attention i needed to have content which is why i immersed myself in books and self education um but what i did notice is after my bariatric surgery that i had i was from you know 100 100 125 kilos in bodybuilding and fat today i'm at 60 kilos i eat one meal or sorry one to two meals a day very small i've cut down on a lot of uh, eating and all that and yeah once you take a bariatric surgery you are dependent on vitamins and minerals for the rest of your life so for me going ahead with the surgery has also cut down my hyperactivity by quite a lot which i don't recommend because it is also making me very physically weak i am 20% of the strength i was uh, pre bariatric surgery days pre whatever in my younger days i'm just 20% health is very fragile i don't have diabetes don't have blood pressure don't have all these heart related elements which you have if you eat too much of sugar and food and fat but flip the switch i have to be very careful with my health because i'm very sensitive need to sleep you know it's more like being a slightly old man you know if it makes any sense so bottom line what i'd like to tell you is number one is first most important thing is please don't diagnose yourself oh i saw this video oh i saw these conditions oh i think i'm adhd stop stop if my wife didn't have me just by reading the internet she would diagnose my baby adhd we have not given her pills prescriptions nothing she is normal so adhd is not a curse no first is don't diagnose yourself the second one is adhd is not as bad as you think it is okay it's not like you finished destroyed and like how that psychologist sorry psychiatrist said uh, and made me feel as if i have a tumor or cancer it's not going to kill you number 3 is different people have different levels of adhd some are too hyper some are medium some are very low you need to figure out which side of the spectrum you are 
And then there are other complications. You might have ADHD and OCD and, you know, compulsive disorder and you might be autistic. So be careful if you, it might be a mix of various combinations. So do not do anything that has permanent or irreversible, uh, you know, actions. Don't take any of them. And last but not the least, I think what is most important, which I've learned through my journey is, the more you spend time knowing yourself, the more you have a mentor to guide you to discover who you are or someone who really genuinely cares about you. And the more time, obsession and interest you take minus the opinions of society and others, you'll truly come to know who you are. Because remember this, why did I go to the psychiatrist in the first place? Is because my parents, society, everyone I knew said I was mental, I was gone case, I was abnormal. Imagine a six, seven-year-old boy being bombarded with you're mad, you're mental, you are abnormal. Uh, like, you'll feel something is wrong, right? So that was very bad, very bad from uh, my parents, whom I absolutely hate, uh, society. Adults can be horrible sometimes, especially our Indians, you know. And um, thankfully, not everyone was bad. There were some good people who told me, you're special. And just those words made me believe I was special, which remained with me forever. So yeah, um, I am a product of a lot of self-experimentation, self-medication, self-many things, which I don't recommend because there is a price to pay. You're not a guinea pig. Uh, but I'm glad to say that I'm one of the many people who, even though being diagnosed with all this, I managed to achieve a level of success. I'm very happy. And remember, just because you might be autistic or ADHD or you might have compulsive disorder or whatever, that doesn't mean you can't live a happy life, a complete life, or someone who has achieved greatness than the normal people. Sometimes it's not the normal folks who achieve greatness. It's always, you know, like Steve Jobs said in that ad, it's the uh, rebels, the misfits, the ones who stand out. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. I forgot to mention this. Um, there is always this common question like, how do you study? How do you study? How do you sit in one place? How do you do? That is very, very hard, especially for an ADHD person, because sitting in one place, like, for example, I'll give a normal, uh, the normal reaction of an ADHD person. If you take a book and decide, I'm going to sit and study, all of a sudden, you'll feel hungry, you'll feel thirsty, you'll want to go to the toilet, you'll feel it's not comfortable, you would be curious to see your phone, you'll be curious about this, you'll think, of, oh, I forgot that. 110 things will come the minute you sit down with a book. Okay, to study. This is very common with people who have ADHD. Okay. Now, what I realize is through experience, and now that I'm far more at the age of 46, I've realized it is not just uh, ADHD. A subject can be boring. If the subject is boring, anyone with any amount of uh, non-ADHD, even if it, he'll be yawning, he'll be, uh, I can't say this. Try forcing yourself to do something like learning a language like Chinese or Sanskrit and you'll be bored. But the minute I put something entertaining like a movie or a suspense or a game or something, you'll be not thinking of hunger, thirst. Or let's say you're going on a romantic date. Finish, you become a different human being altogether. Why is it? It is because the subject is boring. So one is the subject can be boring and you don't have any interest. So either you need to figure out how to put interest by sitting with a group of friends or trying to make the subject interesting or if not reading a book, maybe an audio book, okay? Or tuitions. I used to go for tuitions and that's the only way I has to learn. The other thing which I want to tell you is um, figure out ways and means to make things happen. Like even today, I find it very challenging to read books, especially, you know, being a grown ass man and having so many distractions and whatever I what I do is I take my book keep my phone here in the room go outside sit on a chair comfy chair keep one bottle of water whatever and I make sure that until I finish this to this chapter I will not get up 
I make that decision and I stick to it. And that generally seems to work. And try to make a goal that is easier to achieve. Like, let's say, if you have never done it, don't think, I'm going to do eight hours. Start with 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, and slowly build. However, if you're a student who has to study, then you can't maybe have the luxury of 15 minutes, especially when an exam is coming or 20 minutes per day. Um, I think you really need to ask other people. And, and one final thing is, if you have distractions like the phone, the internet, your friends, your girlfriends, people calling you to play and noise and you are room with all these gadgets and exit, then you'll never ever study. You need to lock yourself in a place, discipline yourself. I'm not going to do, nothing should be there. Only that book, paper, water. There is where progress will be made. And that is how you control your ADHD. So I hope this adds a little bit of value and perspective. Let me know if you have any other doubts and uh, feel free to uh, let me know like what are the challenges you face and I will guide you accordingly. All right. And remember, not medical advice, just a personal opinion, but I hope it helps you. Good, bad, ugly. Comment down below. This is me signing off. Take care.